25 years after one of the most tragic moments in NASA's history, the service paid by the crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger to the goal of space exploration continues to echo in our national consciousness. You know, those of us who are old enough to remember, you know, you, we can probably tell you exactly uh, where they were or what they were doing, you know, the morning of January 28, 1986, when we lost the Space Shuttle Challenger and her crew of seven. Much like the assassination of President Kennedy, uh, the Apollo 11 landing on the moon, uh, September 11th, 2001, all of these are moments that define our history. The NASA family paused Friday to recall the loss of the astronauts and the shuttle. Launching on a cold morning, January 28, 1986, the shuttle suffered a fatal breach in one of its solid rocket boosters. Hot gases escaped the booster's casing and ruptured the external fuel tank Challenger was bolted to during its climb into space. The shuttle broke up instantly when the propellants in the tank ignited. What should have been a day heralded for education turned to tragedy in a split second. Our loved ones were gone, our nation grieved, and our future looked uncertain. Challenger was opening space access further on the SDS-51L mission by including a school teacher, Krista McAuliffe. Astronaut Francis Dick Scobie commanded the mix of veteran astronauts and first-time flyers for the Challenger mission. Michael Smith served as pilot, while Ellison Onizuka, Judy Resnick, and Ronald McNair flew as mission specialists. Engineer Greg Jarvis served as a payload specialist. What we do as explorers is not easy. Michael, Dick, Ronald, Ellison, Krista, Gregory, and Judy knew this and accepted the risk. In the two and a half decades since the mission was lost, NASA set out to learn important lessons from Challenger. The shuttles were modified, processes were refocused, and attitudes covering everything from safety to flight rules were improved. And the sacrifice of these seven contributed greatly to me being able to fly in a far safer, far better, far more effective space shuttle. McAuliffe's mission of teaching from space was not forgotten either. Her backup, Barbara Morgan, returned to the astronaut corps and flew into space as a mission specialist on STS-118. She showed students all over the world principles of physics and microgravity from the unique classroom of the International Space Station. If we didn't somehow continue Challenger's mission of education, then our loved ones would have died in vain. Families of the Challenger crew opened a series of Challenger centers to teach school children about science, engineering, and math. Ultimately, the Challenger crew, along with the astronauts of Columbia's STS-107 and Apollo 1, can be seen as people look into space and see the sunlight reflected off the International Space Station or the large satellites the shuttles carried into orbit. The entire world knew how the Challenger crew died. We wanted the world to know how they lived and for what they were risking their lives. Challenger wasn't the final chapter in the book of space exploration, just a transition chapter in this great book. Nor is Space Shuttle the final chapter. 